hey, everybody, today we're going to walk you through the process of installing the latest version of basic swap DEX on a cloud server. This has many benefits, such as having your DEX instance up 24-7 without the need to keep your local computer on at all times. This, combined with the market-making tool that you can check out in our basic swap YouTube playlist, means that you can effortlessly provide liquidity to the DEX and potentially earn money by setting a premium percentage on top of the market price of any coin you provide. What you need to do first is to find a suitable cloud provider. In this tutorial, we'll be using DigitalOcean because it works out of the box. There's no need to allocate CPU credits or make any special networking adjustments. It just works out of the box, so that's perfect for our purpose. So now we want to create a new server on which we can install BasicSwap on and then remotely access it. Configure how you would like your server to be and make sure to select Ubuntu 22.04 LTS as the OS as it is a constantly maintained version and compatible with everything we'll need. In terms of CPU options, we recommend at least 8GB of RAM, which may feel like a lot to you, but that's because Basic Swap runs the full nodes of all coins you want to swap. We're currently focused on building solutions such as light nodes and web services to take the RAM and storage requirements down by 90 plus percent, but for now you'll need to run full nodes. Be sure to check particle.news for any news about our progress on this matter. For the authentication method, you can either create an SSH key pair or simply use a password. In this tutorial, we'll use a password. Also make sure that your VM has enough storage capacity to store the proven blockchains of all the coins you'll want to swap. Once you're done, you can deploy your server and wait for it to be ready. Once it is, your provider will give you the IP address of your VM, which you'll need to remotely access to it and install basic swap. Now that our server is ready, let's access it via SSH and install basic swap on it. We open a terminal and simply SSH into the root account using the provided IP address. Take note that the account name you'll need to use to access your VM depends on your provider. Here, it is the root account, but with other providers, it may be under a different name, such as Ubuntu for example. Your provider will make it clear what account you need to use to access your VM. The first time that you connect to your cloud server, your computer is going to warn you about connecting to an unknown host. Simply type yes to save the host address locally and enter your password like so. We now find ourselves in our newly deployed server. The first step, as with any new VM, is to update all of its packages to the most recent versions. To do that, we just type the sudo apt update and sudo apt upgrade commands and let the process play out. While our server is updating, let's open the Particle Academy because that's the instructions we'll follow to install and configure the DEX. Our VM prompts us what version of the OpenSSH package we want to use. We can safely keep the local version currently installed or use the maintainer's version. It doesn't really matter in this specific case. Now that we're at the end of the update process, the server recommends that we reboot the instance for all updates to be fully applied. So we will do that by typing sudo reboot command, and we'll just wait for the VM to reboot and then we can safely log back in using the same SSH command we used to log in initially. If you try to reconnect and it says port 22 connection refused, that simply means that your VM is still rebooting. So wait a bit and it should prompt you to enter your password like so. We are back into our now updated VM and we're almost ready to start installing basic swap. In this tutorial, we'll use the Docker method of installation as that is the easiest way to install basic swap. Because our VM uses Ubuntu, let's follow the Linux instructions and install all the dependencies required to install Docker.
Let's now check if we already have Docker installed. Usually that's not the case, but depending on your cloud provider, they may have pre-installed packages such as Docker. So it's always a good idea to check if that's already installed, because if it is, we can safely skip this first step of the process and save time. But here we see that it says command docker not found, which means it's not installed yet. To fix that, we'll follow the instructions provided by Docker themselves on their website. Since we're running Ubuntu, we'll click on the Ubuntu section for the proper instructions and make note of our OS version name, which here is Jammy. We'll be installing Docker using the provided packages, so we scroll down here and take note of the five required packages. Then we click on the provided link and then we select our Ubuntu name, Jammy. Go to Pool, Stable, AMD64, and then we right click on and copy the links of the most recent version of the packages we need. To download these packages on our VM, we can type the wget command followed by the links of the package, which will instruct our node to fetch these files from the web. So now that we've downloaded the five required packages on our VM, and we can verify that we've indeed got the files by typing the ls command, we need to install them. Let's go ahead and type the dpackage command followed by the package names we want to install. In some cases, you can install all packages at once using the asterisk if your current folder only contains the five packages we've just downloaded. But in our case here, we also have a snap folder which prevents us from doing that, so we'll manually instruct the VM to install the right packages by typing them out. Of course, we can tell it to install all files that start with Docker by using the asterisk here like that. Now we've got the Docker packages installed. We can verify that Docker has been installed correctly by typing the docker v command. And we see here the 24.0.7 version is working. We can also check a different way by running the hello world test docker image. And indeed, we've pulled it from the web and successfully ran it. We also recommend setting Docker in a way that can run without sudo. That's going to make things easier when configuring and managing basic swap. To do that, we just, once again, follow the instructions provided by Docker and reboot our VM when prompted to do so. And now we see that we're able to run Docker without pseudo writes. Before moving on to the next step, let's clean our folder of the package files we don't need anymore. Just type ls to see the package files and use the rm command to delete them. Now we can proceed to create the Docker image for basic swap. Let's first make sure that we've got the prerequisites installed on our VM. Now we can clone the basic swap GitHub repository using git clone, just like that. The Docker configuration file required to build the basic swap image is located in the basic swap slash Docker folder, so we want to head over there. We're almost ready to build the image, but before, we need to specify the coin data path. This is where the core of each coin will be installed and where the various blockchains will be stored. You can specify any location you want, but we recommend sticking with the default location. You'll need to manually type this command every time you open a new terminal to interact with the DEX, unless you make that information permanent, which we'll see how to do in a few minutes. So for now, we just copy the command here. There'll be no output, and that's perfectly normal. 
Now we can build the basic swap Docker image. We copy this Docker build command here, but our VM tells us Docker is not installed. That's because Docker has different versions with different ways to use it. In some cases, you will need to type docker slash compose, and in other cases, docker space compose, which is what we need to do here. So we can execute the command by just editing the command just like so. This part of the process is likely going to take a few minutes, but luckily you don't need to do anything other than sit back and relax. Now that the process is complete, we can move on to the next step. If you want to use Monero, you'll need to set its current blockchain height to speed up the syncing process. Just copying the command here will do just that. And now onto the configuration part of the process. Using these two commands here, we define how we want our basic swap instance to be configured, what coins we will use, and other settings which you can learn more about in this Particle Academy tutorial or on basic swaps readme file on GitHub. As you know, basic swap is compatible with a range of cryptocurrencies, including Bitcoin, Monero, Particle, Firo, PVEX, Dash, Litecoin, and many more to come. If you want to enable any of them, type them here, but for the purpose of this tutorial, we'll just be using Bitcoin and Monero. And of course, Particle will also be enabled, as it doesn't have to be specified because it is installed by default since the DEX uses the SMSG network that runs on it. We can then safely copy these two commands in one go and paste them into our VM. Once again, we'll let the process play out. In the case of Bitcoin, because we use the fast sync option, basic swap is downloading a checkpoint of its blockchain, which will significantly fast track the syncing process by bringing it immediately to about 90%. Now that the process is complete, the installer gives us a mnemonic that we must save. Please note that the wallet of each coin you've enabled uses the same seed, so you can use that to restore your coins on any wallet you want. If you've opted to enable Monero, you'll need to also save the current blockchain height by typing this command here. That'll speed up your recovery process if you export your seed on another wallet. Now we have an optional step here that will make the export command permanent, essentially meaning you won't need to type it out every time you close and open a new terminal window. Simply open up your .env file using the nano text editor and uncomment the export line that tells BasicSwap where your coin configuration folder is. If you specified a different location than the default one before building your Docker image, make sure to change it here as well, else your DEX instance will not function properly. Also take note that, below this line, you also specify your time zone so that time values are displayed properly on your user interface. Now that we're all set, we can launch basic swap for the first time. We do that by entering the docker compose up command, and once again, you may need to type docker space compose instead of docker slash compose, depending on your docker version. We see now that basic swap has been launched and is booting up. Here you may notice a few connection errors. That's because basic swap tries to connect to each individual coin core while they are still booting. When they are ready, basic swap will connect to them and move on to the next step. Once all booted up, your terminal will display addresses that you could connect to to access the user interface. But since we're running this instance on a cloud, we have one final step to go through. Let's open a new terminal window and type this ssh command to allow us to connect to the DEX using our browser. Make sure to type the correct username and IP address of your VM, and upon pressing enter and typing in our password, no output will show up. That's normal, but we can now remotely access our instance of the DEX via our local browser. All we have to do is open a browser and navigate to localhost 5555. And we can see that we've now successfully installed the DEX without any issue. We can still monitor the progress of the chain syncing here or navigate to the wallet section of the DEX and look at the progress bars.
clicking on the refresh button will update the percentages. Now if we go to the order book, we'll see that it's empty. It's perfectly normal for now, because you'll need to have your particle blockchain completely synced before any offer shows up. That's because the order book uses what is called the Secure Messaging Network, or SMSG for short, via your particle node which needs to be at 100%. And that concludes this tutorial. Please check out the Basic Swap playlist on our channel for other video guides on Basic Swap and its companion market making tool. As always, consider giving us a like and subscribing to our channel to support us and help us spread the word. Additionally, make sure to hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on any new particle or basic swap related content.